Okay, today I'm doing something very unusual. With, if you're watching on the screen right now, Nigel Sud, who is the creator of the apps that allows us to convert Sigma and Jara into curator consumable devices. There's going to be a separate video that shows you how to uh, use the app, but I want to give you a flavor from the actual creator of the value of both Sigma and Jara. So Nigel, please uh, tell us about you a bit and tell us about the, this app and why this is so, uh, so important. Hi, Jose, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, I've been working with IBM for the past few years. I've been working to develop content for Curator. Uh, and this is a, a really cool tool that uh, I've been working on for the past little bit. And like you mentioned, it, it helps us work with both Yara rules and Sigma rules and creating uh, a system that allows us to use them with Curator. Um, so in the case of Yara, what this app does is it allows us to uh, ingest and store Yara rules in the app and convert them into something that Curator can use. So Yara is a tool that is designed for scanning files, scanning processes, uh, and there's plenty of public content for this already available right now. There are GitHub repositories all over the place with uh, security researcher defined uh, detection criteria that uh, allow you to scan your files and your processes or really any payload that you want to feed it. And there's plenty of use cases for this with regards to Curator. Uh, there's the, uh, it gives you the ability to ingest these rules into the app, store them there, and then you can go and take a variety of content and run it through against these Yara rules. There's no easy one-to-one -one conversion between something like Yara and AQL, so this app gives you the ability to use it within your own platform. In the case of this app, we have the ability to specify raw payloads or string data, we give you the ability to upload files and scan those against any Yara rules you have stored in the system. And we also give you the ability to run AQL searches or even your own save searches to pull in log data from QRadar and test them against those Yara rules. Now, this might not be as performant as a native AQL search, but what it does allow you to do is to very, very quickly take advantage of the content that's out there. So, for example, a new vulnerability just drops. Uh, a whole bunch of uh, public researchers go and create a whole bunch of de detection criteria for this new vulnerability. And you want to know really, really quickly whether or not anything in your system has a flaw. You can go and you can run an AQL search to pull in all of your log data, go and take these security researcher defined YAR rules, upload them into the app, and then you can really, really quickly go through your entire log data run them against these Yara rules and tell immediately whether anything has matched and that'll be your cue to start digging further. Uh, and to kind of illustrate this point, back when Log4j first came out, that big vulnerability from about a year and a half ago, uh, really quickly we had something where we could go and take in some Yara rules that a security researcher outside of IBM had defined and we could go and we could really quickly go pull in all of our uh, HTTP server log data and test it against these Yara rules. And sure, we could have gone and created you know, some better content for that, some QRadar rules or some AQL searches, but this allowed us to, within minutes of finding this Yara rule, go and create content that would allow us to go and see whether we had any issues on our system. Uh, so the, the speed of use is really the big thing here for anything new and big. And there's also, like I mentioned, the ability to upload files as well. So if you have a suspicious file, if you have a suspicious email file uh, or you know, file that you found in an endpoint and you want to uh, you know, run some detections against it, you don't need to be familiar with all the Yara CLI tools. You can go and you can put in all the Yara rules that you want that you know, may be written by you and may be written by somebody else and you're just taking advantage of some public rules. Uh, you can go and you can just upload the file and it'll do all the matching for you. And it gives you the ability to specify complex queries within the app too. If you have a whole bunch of Yara rules from a whole bunch of different files and you just want to know if anything matches, uh, you know, you can go and you can test it against a whole, against a whole bunch of things all at once. Um, so we, what we really wanted to do with the Yara side of this app was to take uh, kind of the vast amount of content that already exists and give users a really easy way uh, to put that to use. Um, and so that kind of that kind of sums up the Yara side of things. Um, we we do also again kind of in line with that uh, ease of use uh, paradigm. One of the other things that we're doing with Yara is allowing users to import from GitHub directly. So 
you know, if you find a, a, a big public repository that you want to use, you can go ahead and you can pull all of that in directly into the app without having to, you know, download all the files and upload them all uh, to the app. You can just put in the GitHub uh, repository or folder URL and go and just import everything. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the R side of things. For for Sigma, it's slightly different. For Sigma, we were able to actually come up with a system uh, that does allow you to take uh, Sigma rule content and swap it over into something ingestible by QRadar. So Sigma rules are, are less about uh, files and processes like Yara, and they're more about uh, a, you know tool agnostic detection rules. So it's it's kind of like defining a sim rule uh, without an actual sim. Uh, it's it defines all the things that you would need if you had a sim and wanted to create content for it. So it's you, you can kind of think of it as as like an open uh, you know detection language. Um, so we can we can take that and we can convert it to AQL uh, using a script written by another IBMer, Noah Class. So shout out to her. And uh, so once we can do that conversion to AQL. We can ingest Sigma rules, and using the app, we can convert it either into a search or into a QRadar rule. Uh, and this is all done using the AQL. And uh, from there, you can either run searches from within the app, just like you can with Yara. Um, and we also have the ability to inject rules directly into QRadar. So we can go and we can take Sigma rules that we've either written ourselves or that we've gotten from security researchers or that we found on GitHub, and we can ingest those into the app translate them into native AQL uh, or into a, uh, an AQL filter query that can be used in a QRadar rule. And then we can either run that search in the app or, and one of the really cool things about this app is that we can take these AQL filter queries, convert them into QRadar rules, and then inject them directly into the system. So within a few minutes of finding these Sigma rules, you can go and upload them to the app, do this translation, tweak them, and then inject them into QRadar in a way that allows it to immediately start detecting. So it, it creates a, a fully working rule that you can go over you know, to your offenses tab, take a look at your rules, uh, and you can see that there's something working there right away. Um, so I, again here, just like with Yara, the big thing is the ease of use. We wanted to take this vast wealth of, of you know, Sigma rules that exist either on GitHub or, or elsewhere by security researchers and give QRadar users the ability to go and use these natively. Um, and that's what we've been able to do. We've been able to create a system where you can create these searches and rules and have content basically at your fingertips so that whenever uh, something big happens, whenever there are new Sigma rules or Yara rules for you know, some big new vulnerability and you don't have the time to go and you know, spend a lot of time uh, you know, learning about these Sigma rules and Yara rules and how to convert it into something that QRadar can use. You can just ingest it into your system and start detecting right away when that's what's critical. Yeah, the, the, um, that, that is that is speed is, 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 is an essence here. There's a lot of prolific researchers out there that uh, the soon, mm -hmm. yeah, as soon as something hits the, the fan, they produce the Jara and Sigma rules and now people can actually try it and maybe, you know, test it and check for things. And maybe IBM will come couple of days later, maybe a week later with a formal app that maybe is optimized and maybe has better performance, but, but you don't have to wait for that. You, you, you can use uh, the, the, the app that you and others have created uh, to achieve that speed and think that that's great. Exactly. And yeah, that's the, that's the really big benefit is being able to leverage that content that's already available um, as, as a stopgap measure for you know, when something really big does happen. And then, yeah, we'll come up with, you know, something a little bit more fine-tuned later. Uh, but we wanted to, yeah, give, exactly get that speed. Ayul, thank you very much. I think that this, this app is going to help a lot of people across the world to, to get more, leverage more the, the, the curator investment that they have. And, and I really thank you and, and your team for, for creating this app, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. And, and yeah, uh, I echo your thoughts. I, I hope it's useful and I hope... Uh, all the curator customers can get some good use out of this. Thanks a bunch, Nigel. All the best. All right. Bye -bye.